Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, the atlas and axis vertebrae. Here's the atlas, or C1, and the axis right below C2. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the atlas first. So our first structure is the anterior arch. Um, you'll notice that the C1 vertebrae does not have a vertebral body, so that's something that's unique to C1. Instead, just has this anterior arch. And you can see a little tubercle sticking out slightly on the front of that arch. That's called the anterior tubercle. Now, if we go ahead and look back behind the arch, we see a smooth facet, and that is called the facet for dense. It's called the facet for dense because if we bring back C2, we can see the odontoid process, or dense, it's called, um, articulates with the facet for dense. So that's why it's smoother, there's an articulation. Um, and you can actually kind of get an idea why C2, which is highlighted, would be called axis, because it's the axis that C1 and therefore our head rotate around. Let's go ahead and take a look at the transverse processes. Now you can see something that's unique to cervical vertebrae, and that is the presence of a transverse foramen within their transverse processes. Um, that transverse foramen is for the vertebral artery. That's something that's unique to the cervical region. I actually I might need to correct another video. I can't remember if I said this correctly, but um, I'm, I believe I may have said that only C1 through C6 have a transverse foramen. That's actually not accurate. <clears throat> C1, all, or rather, all cervical vertebrae have a transverse foramen. What I was, I think what was knocking around in my head when I said that, here, this is a good shot, you can see this column of foramen that allow an artery to travel within it. Um, what I think what I was, what was stuck in my mind when I said that was this. Um, so I just added the artery so you can see the vertebral artery traveling down the foramen. What I was thinking is that the vertebral artery does not travel through the C7 transverse foramen. Um, it enters at C6, so that was just a little slip up. Um, so if you saw that video and I confused you, I apologize. But this is this is a pretty awesome. I hate to get off topic, but this is a pretty awesome view right here. We can see the vertebral arteries ascending the column of transverse foramina, and when they get to C1, they kind of take this right turn underneath these occipital condyles, or right turn in this case, left turn here and they form up to form the basilar artery, which becomes the, um, the circle of Willis up there. So we'll get, we'll get into that more um, when we get to the circulatory system. Let's get rid of that for now and hide the other bones. Um, so that brings us to the superior and inferior articular facets. So let's look at superior first. The superior facets kind of look like little kidney beans. That matches the kidney bean shape of the occipital condyles on our skull. Our skull sits right on these two structures. So um, when you nod up and down, your occipital condyles are rocking back and forth on these two structures. And that is why this bone is called atlas, because it's holding up our skull, just like um, atlas, the mythological god of something. I apologize, I don't know, but I know that he... Uh, he holds up the world. Um, that's that's his job. So, and that's the job of Atlas too. Now, fortunately, they look quite a bit different than the inferior articular facets. The inferior articular facets are roughly circular or oval shaped. Um, that helps you tell the difference between the top and bottom of Atlas. The superior articular facets are kidney bean shaped. The inferior are more or less circles. Um, and we're just about done. We just have the posterior arch. And it is right here. 
as well as the um, posterior tubercle right here, which is that little part that sticks out the back of the arch. And then, like all vertebrae, there's the vertebral canal in the middle. And that's it. That's axis. I'm sorry. That's it. That's atlas. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the vertebra below, which is C2. And this is such a, a good way to view these two bones and the way they articulate with one another. You can see the occipital condyles sitting on the superior articular facets of C1. You can see the inferior articular facets resting on axis. And you can see the dens articulating with atlas. It's pretty cool. Um, when you look left or right, the first 25 degrees or so, that's happening all right here. The rest of it comes from segments below. So whether you're saying yes or no, a lot of it's happening here. Yes, is, a lot of the yes motion, the naughty motion is occurring here. A lot of the no motion would be occurring right here. So let's get going and start labeling some things. So the, the first thing, the most obvious structure here, that's pretty unique to see too, would be uh, the odontoid process or dens. Uh, below that, you have the body. Um, this is one that I myself mess up quite a bit. I see students mess it up quite a bit, and I even see it labeled wrong on images on the internet and stuff. So, um, my my first instinct is to always label this region the pedicle, and then this region the lamina. But that but that's that's incorrect. So, um, we know the pedicle is the first connection between the body and the rest of the vertebra. So the pedicle is actually right here. That's from an anterior view. From a posterior view, the pedicles would be right there. Pretty short structures. So those are the pedicles. Um, and then the next structure is the transverse process, which is pretty, pretty small on axis. And you can see the transverse foramen inside of the transverse process because it's a cervical vertebrae. Yep. Uh, we also have superior articular facets right here. And we'll flip this over so we can see the inferior articular facets down below. Oops. And then we have the lamina. And then we have the spinous process. And because it's a cervical vertebrae, it has a bifid spinous process. And like all of our vertebrae, a vertebral canal. And that's it, that's C1 and C2. Two pretty interesting, um, pretty interesting bones. I mean, all, all the vertebrae are interesting, but C1 and C2 are so unique and they have to accommodate so many different uh, motions and they need to be mobile and stable at the same time. Um, when we get to ligaments, the ligaments between these two bones are really interesting. Um, but until then, thanks everybody.